We meet again here for the Daily Bread Bible Study. This is day 182. We are in Proverbs chapters 4 through 7 for Tuesday, June 30th, 2020. So in Proverbs chapter 4, we pick it up in verse 17, which says, For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. This wisdom literature is very fitting. It continues in the theme of Proverbs, which says the righteous will prosper and the wicked will fail. It also references something that's very valuable to me. In, you know, as a Lutheran minister, I am called to be a minister of word and sacrament. And in the Lutheran tradition, we uphold two sacraments, the sacrament of holy baptism and the sacrament of the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion, as it's called. And the two elements of Holy Communion, we have wine and bread, which is the body and blood of Jesus, you know, um, there for us in those elements of bread and wine. And so this imagery, you know, is imagery talking about eating bread and drinking wine. And the, you know, the sense that stands out to me is, is kind of the same, you know, sense that we have with Holy Communion, is the idea that when you are nurtured and whatever you feast upon, right, you are able to um, be connected with. So in, I mean, a common English phrase is you are what you eat. And so the imagery here is somebody who is eating the bread of wickedness and drinking the wine of violence, which will leave them with wickedness and violence. And those things will lead to failure here in the book of Proverbs. Moving on to Proverbs chapter 5, I selected kind of two verses. Now, before I get into describing these two verses, I want to visit the imagery of the opposite of wisdom. So in Proverbs, the imagery of wisdom is used. You know, the imagery of wisdom often being connected with an intelligent and wise and you know, very pious uh, woman. The opposite of you know, wisdom here is used is a foolish, loose, adulterous, and treacherous woman. So just comment about, you know, this whole um, idea that's, you know, referenced here in Proverbs, the connection to women. I think it's very much shows that Proverbs was written from a male's point of view, especially uh, a male in a male-dominated society with gender roles of their culture being women, you know, as primarily mothers and family managers, kind of in the best way uh, best light to kind of see that role for women there. So, you know, this feels very much uh, different than the culture that we have in our day and time, as we, you know, do not reduce a woman to just being a mothering role or a family manager in our day and time. But I will also say the wisdom is that you know, it's critiquing men thinking, not with wisdom, but rather out of their own sexual desires. And, uh, you know, it's very important to note that it takes two to tango, right? If you have an adulterous woman, you also have a man who is guilty as well, too. And so this man is willing to be led into an affair. And the lack of self-discipline of a man, right, will lead to ruin. That's kind of the point that Proverbs wants to show and illustrate. And so we have some examples of you know, how this folly, this lack of self-discipline, and also even self-discipline within regards to sexual desires is very important. So now for Proverbs 5, 12 through 14, it says, Oh, how I hated discipline and my heart despised reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to instructors now I am at the point of utter ruin in the public assembly. We see an individual lamenting his foolish choices, the way that he did not discipline himself. He just followed his lustful desires, and that led to his downfall. Along with that, in verse 18 and 19, it says, 
Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth, a lovely deer, a graceful doe. So the best part about this is just having, you know, the idea of when you're at peace, when you follow your love, when you don't let, you know, other things, you know, get in the way of that and you join with somebody who is connected with you in spirit and heart and mind who seeks to be righteous, who seeks to be just and to treat you with uh, love and respect and dignity, that it very much is a blessing to your life and it creates love in your heart. And so that is a gift that we, um, that we look forward to being able to celebrate in our relationships with other individuals. And I hope that you are able to have that loving influence and that relationship um, in your life as well to somebody that you can show love and be loved by with honesty, with integrity, with wholeness of heart, and with, um, yeah, without searching for any, anything else that could bring you your ruin. Moving on to Proverbs chapter 6, I selected verses 16 through 19. It says, There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and a hand that sheds innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that hurry to run to evil, a lying witness who testifies falsely, and one who sows discord in a family. So, you know, this is kind of a, a list just of you know, various different kind of ways of dysfunctioning, ways that you know, bring and sow not peace in a relationship or in a community, but discord and disunity. And it just leads to people getting hurt and harmed, especially people who don't deserve it. And so the idea is just to continue on with doing what is right and avoiding these seven things mentioned. Closing for today, we have chapter 7, and I selected verse 23. He is like a bird rushing into a snare, not knowing that it will cost him his life. So going back again to the imagery of adultery, this is specific, or speaking specifically of a young man without sense. It references in the earlier part of chapter 7, a young man without sense. And so a young man who is willing to be um, influenced into adultery, and it talks of, again, that imagery, you know, in this male-dominated um, literature of a foolish woman, an adulterous woman trying to uh, lure a unsuspecting young man without sense into adultery. And so it says, he is like a bird rushing into a snare, not knowing that it will cost him his life. So the more that we can turn to wisdom, the Proverbs you know, try and instruct and, and teach in that ways of wisdom. May you uh, be able to discern wisdom from foolishness. May you be able to discern what is wise and leads to um, a good life, quality life, a life of peace, a life of harmony, a life worth living versus trying to just do things for your own selfishness or selfish gain or ways in which that just benefit you alone. So I'm glad to be connected with you in this world together with you and I wish you blessings as we try and live it out together following the instructions that God has given.